epistle lesson is from Romans 13, 8 to 14. Don't be in debt to anyone except for the obligation to love each other. Whoever loves another person has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not desire what others have, and any other commandments are all summed up in one word. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love doesn't do anything wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is what fulfills the law. As you do all this, you know what time it is. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first had faith. The night is almost over and the day is near. So let's get rid of the actions that belong to the darkness and put on the weapons of light. Let's behave appropriately as people who live in the day, not in partying and getting drunk, not in sleeping around in obscene behavior, not in fighting in obsession. Instead, dress yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't plan to indulge your selfish desires. Our gospel lesson comes from Matthew 18, 15 to 20. <clears throat> if your brother or sister sins against you, go and correct them when you are alone together. If they listen to you, then you've won over your brother or sister. But if they won't listen, take with you one or two others so that every word may be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses. But if they still won't pay attention, report it to the church. If they won't pay attention even to the church, treat them as you would a Gentile and tax collector. I assure you that whatever you fasten on earth will be fastened in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. Again, I assure you that if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, then my Father who is in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there with them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There once was a woman. That, that line, there once was a somebody, is a cue that this is a parable. Not about any real person, but about real problems. There once was a woman, worked at the truck stop, had the breakfast shift. And then on Friday nights and Saturday nights, she spent her time at the bar. She had a lot of fun. Uh, she often entertained gentlemen. And she was kind of known around town by a rough reputation. But something was missing in her life and she wanted more and this, this carrying on uh, just wasn't filling something really deep inside of her. So she wandered into a church, not one of our standard brand churches where all the people are well to do and uh, tend to look like they're judgmental. We, we have that problem. But she went to a little, it was called Lighthouse of Faith Church, a little Pentecostal church. And there she discovered the gospel. She discovered that she could confess her sins and Jesus would take them away and enter into her life. And she did. And she was baptized and she joined the church. And for some time she held it together. She had got a Bible and she brought it to church and she listened and she used the the highlighter to mark the scriptures as the preacher preached and her life was kind of moving in the right direction but then she got a call, she got a call that her father had died, not that they had been very close, in fact they had been very far apart, he was just basically the same kind of hard living guy as she had been and had pretty much forgotten her, but she hadn't forgotten him, and just having him gone so she can't curse him emptied her. And she needed something. And so she went back to the bar, and she got herself pretty well 
knocked uh, faced, <laughs> messed up. And then she wound up at home with a gentleman. But next door, Sister Emily was watching the next morning as the fellow came out of the door and got in his car. And Sister Emily at the church knew that she was doing what was wrong. She was doing what Paul had said, don't be involved in those sinful practices. So Emily, being a good Christian and a, a solid saint that she was, she marched over to Tammy Joe's house, knocked on the door, and told her, you are a sinner and you need to confess your sins and uh, accept Jesus again in your heart. And Tammy Joe told her where she could put all of that because she was hurting. So Sister Emily went to the elders of the church and told of the situation. Two of them went to Tammy Joe's house. They knocked on the door. She didn't even open the storm doors. And then she yelled back at them with all of their fine hypocrisy. Next Sunday she did go to church hoping to get somebody to understand how bad she was hurting inside and out. But what she found at church was the preacher telling the whole congregation of her sin, just like we were told by Jesus to do. It was a very uh, conservative church, a very fundamentalist church. And when he was done, she lit the rafters with language that church hasn't heard in a long, long time. She told the people just exactly what she thought of them, and she stomped out. We make up rules. We turn to the Bible for, for guidance in how to behave, and yet we'll let the rules become our armor against love. We do that. We get our preconception of what good behavior is supposed to be, and then we refuse to love somebody because, well, they did that, whatever that is. They didn't do it the way we would have done it, so they are wrong, we are right, and the Bible tells me what to do. And it hurts. You see, I just read a, a short piece by Thomas Merton, who said we all have a false self. Most people, that's all they have. A false self. Built up out of our bragging about our past, maybe our fears of our past, the things we do to avoid the past, and then cemented, if you will, with our hopes for the future and our fears of the future. And underneath there is nothing. We are all tied up in this false self. You remember the invisible man when he wrapped the gauze around his head and there was nothing underneath? And when a person has nothing underneath, that false self dies. And there's nothing underneath. But we have the love of Jesus Christ. Poor Tammy Jo, she was looking for that love to fill that real self inside to, to know she was God's special creation. Love is the willingness to extend ourselves for the sake of the other. We can almost say that together. It is the will to extend ourselves for the sake of the other. Let's say it together. It is the will to extend ourselves for the sake of the other. It's not a feeling. It's not a duty. It's certainly not rules. But when we have the will to extend ourselves for others, the feeling comes, the duty comes, and the rules are kept. That's what Paul is saying. Love. And if you are stretching yourself for another person, then you will keep every one of the 613 laws in the Torah. And you will keep every rule we have for good behavior. 
Now, sometimes that's going to mean caring enough for a person not to just be blunt in their face, not quite lying, but it's caring for the other person. That's love. And in that love, there's a freedom because we no longer have to worry about what rules we might or might not break, and we don't have to worry about that false self being wrapped around us that will die because we are real and we are filled not just with the love that we extend but with the God's love that when God's will to extend himself on the cross for your sake and that creates that inner self you know it's already there but we can start to notice it. That's what love does. A number of months later, kind of a large number of months later, the pastor of the Lighthouse of Faith was at the grocery store and he came around the corner and here was Tammy Jo coming around the corner and they slam each other and, and he basically pins her with his shopping cart into the shelf. And he goes, oh my Tammy, I want you to know that not one day has gone by that I haven't prayed for you. And she looks at him and she breaks into sobs. He says, let's go to my office. We talk a little bit. They went. There was a little talk about that. but He counseled her there in his office with his secretary in the next room. Visited her about what it meant to believe in God and in Jesus Christ and the death of her father was all part of the death of Christ, wasn't it? And she, he helped put her back together and she was ready to once again join the church, to confess and to join the church. So he took it to the elders. And the elders said, well, that woman, she doesn't need to be in the church. She's proven she can't be a good Christian. She's proven she doesn't love Christ. And he said, how many times have you forgiven her? And uh, said, well, we forgave her when we let her become a member of the church. So you haven't forgiven her seven times, have you? No. You certainly haven't forgiven her 70 times, have you? No. Well, Jesus said you must forgive her seven times 70 times. And if you can't do that, I'm going to have to excommunicate all of you from the church. If you can't keep Christ's law. And they all decided maybe Tammy Jo could become a member and a part of their family and maybe they could love her the way God already loves her through Jesus Christ. And she received freedom in love. 